Cornell professor is demanding an apology for the school's mistreatment of him following his own criticism of the Black Lives Matter movement after a colleague voiced praise for the terrorist organization Hamas. Cornell law professor William Jacobson joins me now to share his story. Uh, professor, before we go into your circumstance, I do want to play the comments from Russell Rickfords. Now, this was after the terrorist attack on October 7th and after we received these horrendous reports of the butchery that, was, that had been inspired and carried out by Hamas. Let me play uh, Professor Rickfords' comments. Roll tape. Hamas has punctured the illusion of invincibility. That's what they've done. It was exhilarating. It was exhilarating. It was energizing. And if they weren't exhilarated no, no. by this, this challenge to the monopoly of violence, by this Professor, uh, that was just despicable. The fact that he was ex said over and over how exhilarating and exciting it was to see Hamas's terrorist massacres. Uh, has, has anybody asked him for, or has he given an apology for those statements? No, in fact, according to the Cornell Sun student newspaper, he's completely defending himself and he's standing by those comments. And the university was very slow to react to this. They initially offered a very tepid response. Uh, only after mounting pressure and media attention did they uh, even you know, mention him by name. And that stands in contrast to how they've treated other people, including me, in the past. Well, let's talk about that. What did they say to you after you had criticism for Black Lives Matter? Sure. So uh, right after George Floyd um, and the rioting and the looting, I criticized the rioting and the looting. Um, there was another professor in the chemistry department who also criticized that. We were met with immediate reaction from the administration. The university denounced that chemistry professor. The law school denounced me. And we were standing against violence. We were standing against rioting and looting. We were standing up for peace. And we were quickly denounced by name. Now you have a professor who stands up for violence, who feels exhilarated by the mass murder, mass torture and mass rape of Jewish Israelis and other Israelis, and the university is very slow to react to him. It just shows how ideological things are on campuses. And you think of how students' lives are and their minds are being distorted by what's going on, by what they're hearing from professors, who many of whom are idolized by some of the students. I'm just, do you think, and we have to keep this short, do you think that the university can reform itself? Or do they need the pressure of donors and alumni? They need the pressure uh, dramatically. I don't think they're capable of reforming themselves. I'm not even sure if the universities are capable, capable of reforming with that outside pressure because this ideology is so deeply embedded. And luckily, we have a videotape of this professor saying these horrible things, and he's not, re, re, you know, not apologizing for them. I'm just wondering how many other professors are saying these things in private or perhaps in front of his classes? Well, his viewpoint is shared, not the majority viewpoint, but there is a core group on campus at Cornell and elsewhere which has bought into this sort of revolutionary ideology as regards Israel, and they direct it to Israel and they direct it to the United States. So it is definitely present. We have a terrorism supporting problem on campuses that universities refuse to address. And I wonder what parents think, parents who are putting up 60 grand or more for, for these educators. Uh, thank you, Professor. Best of luck to you and, and what you're doing to try to set the record straight. Appreciate it.